Hello and welcome to the second reason why people don't always get the grades that they think they deserve and that is that for one reason or another the mind goes blank. Have you ever really wanted to talk to someone so very badly and when the opportunity to talk to them comes you just can't find the words? For weeks or more you've been rehearsing what you want to say but then the time comes and there's nothing in the noggin. Palms are sweating, mouth is dry, tongue sticks to the roof of your mouth and the mind is a blackboard that's been wiped clean. Everyone has had times when the word they know is on the tip of their tongue and they just can't quite get it. Oh, what was that word? If that happens to be an important formula you need for your question, that's bound to be on a question that's in several parts which are collectively worth eight marks and that's 10% of your total marks vanished right before your eyes. Bye bye perfect grade, someone else can enjoy that six figure salary I was dreaming of. Do you think I'll get any marks for the tears I just shed on my paper? In this series of slides we are going to look purely at the reasons why the mind goes blank and in the following videos I'm going to address those issues and look at the solutions or things that we can do to prevent them from happening and things that we can do if they do happen during an exam. Okay so why does this happen? Well there are two reasons how this can happen. One is if there's nothing there to begin with there's no way to access it by which I'm not calling anyone stupid what I mean is if the specific information needed to solve the question was not learned or not learned properly then by the time you get to the exam there's nothing you can do about it. All the mental recall techniques in the world can't recall information that was never there to begin with. The other reason is the information is there but for whatever reason it just can't be accessed in the moment. There are many causes for this and we'll look at them in the following slides. Okay, one reason there might be nothing there to begin with is the very first reason we looked at uh, in the previous videos and that is lack of revision. If, by the way, you came across this video by accident and haven't looked at all the videos covering lack of revision, they can be found in the videos entitled How Not to Tr Tank Your Exams Parts 1, 2 and 3. Maybe you have revised for your exams but that scoundrel, the deceitfulness of knowledge or the deceitfulness of the learning process, which is sometimes called the illusion of knowledge or the illusion of competence, it strikes again. This is where the brain fools us into thinking we know something when in fact the knowledge is only stored in our short term or working memory. The solution to this is to test yourself regularly and to get an honest appraisal of what you know and what you don't know before the exam. Don't let the exam paper be the thing that reveals what you know and what you don't know. Again, this topic has been discussed at length in How Not to Tank Your Exams Part 3. But in summary, the way to avoid this is start revising early, revise little and often, test yourself regularly. The best way to ensure that you fool yourself into thinking that you know more than you really do know is to leave revision until the last minute and cram the night before the exam. Just between you and me, everybody does it. And it is fatal to your grades. Don't let it be you. The last reason that could be why that you didn't get the marks you thought you deserved is that you over-revised certain topics and didn't leave time to revise other topics. You might be an expert in algebra and rubbish at geometry. In GCSEs, what's required is a broad knowledge of all topics. Um, that will get you a much higher mark than a deep knowledge of a few topics. Okay, on the topic of a mental block, um, there are loads of reasons why, for one reason or another, the brain just will not recall information. Psychogenic amnesia, or a fugue state, 
uh, and other dissociative disorders are extreme examples of when the brain's coping mechanism for dealing with particularly unpleasant memories, the brain sort of runs away from those memories or, or blocks out those memories and refuses to recall them. In a much less extreme case, whenever something important comes up, such as an important speech or presentation or an examination, fear, anxiety, stress, nerves, they can cause something very similar and cause our brain to block out the information that we want. Do not underestimate how nerve-wracking an exam can be, especially if it's your first time. This is particularly likely to happen in an exam in a subject where you hate the subject and you're only doing it because someone's told you to do it or because you think you're going to need it. If you've been awake for long periods, a build-up of toxins in the brain can hinder the recall mechanism as well as making it harder for the brain to assimilate and process data, making it hard for you to understand the questions that you're trying to answer and hard for you to formulate an answer to the question. It's also amazing how many people can say and write incoherent gibberish that made perfect sense at the time to them just because tiredness has messed up their thinking process. A great way to get lower grades than you deserve is to go into an exam tired after a long night of cramming. Do not underestimate the effects of hunger and thirst on cognition. Generally speaking, missing a meal before an exam shouldn't have an adverse effect on your performance, and some people think there might even be a slight improvement. However, being malnourished and having a really um, poor diet, it can have a very negative effect on the brain. Um, also, overeating um, can also cause your brain to be a bit sluggish. In fact, the original definition of the word stupid was a person whose brain was being sluggish after a really big meal. You know, after like Christmas dinner, you sort of your tummy's popping out and all you want to do is lie on the couch and fall asleep. Well, that's the original idea concept of stupid. So yes, too much food can also cause the brain to not work properly. So a poor diet um, can also be a problem. Uh, in the same way, thirst generally doesn't have a major impact on your grades, but dehydration will. It can cause you to be a lot more tired uh, than you should be. Um, but also, hunger and thirst can also mess up your sleep patterns as well, adding to the tiredness that you already feel. And we've already seen how bad tiredness can mess up your cognitive abilities. Now, there's absolutely no doubt that alcohol and drugs severely hampers cognition. Uh, so do remember that if you're tempted to take non-prescription medication in the hopes of improving your performance on an exam, those stay awake pills, they're actually, all they do is stop you falling asleep. They don't usually make you more alert and they certainly don't improve your brain's ability to concentrate. Sickness also can cause people to underperform in an exam, but there's little you can do about it once you've got sick. However, there are things you can do to reduce the risks of getting sick and in future videos we're going to look at some of those um, things you can do. Now, it may sound silly, but some people do sabotage their own exams, either consciousness or unconsciously. Consciousness. Um, th this is a real phenomenon where fear of success can cause the mind to refuse to recall important information needed when it's most important. And now there's this word that I have trouble pronouncing. I think it's called Einstellung. Uh, it's when your mind is stuck in a rigid thought pattern. Um, you've got one idea of maybe how to solve a problem, and because that idea is so strong in your mind, it prevents you from seeing maybe a simpler or a better solution. And in the next series of videos, what we're going to do is take these topics one at a time and look at solutions and things that you can do to prevent these things from causing a mental block and 
um, things that you can do once you're in the exam to help um, alleviate the mental block. Okay, I would like to wish you all the best with your exams and I'll see you in the next video.